What's up, Webflow fam? In this video, I want to show you how using units correctly can speed up your Webflow process. So we're going to cover these basic units, pixels, which is a fixed value, viewport width, which is a percentage of the entire screen width, percent, which is a percent of its parent container, and then EM, which is a percent of the font size. So pixels, for instance, if we were to set, say, this image to 500 pixels wide by 300 pixels high, and then we were to preview, once we change the width of the screen, the image width isn't changing at all. It's a set unit that's not going to scale. If, however, we were to switch it to viewport and say 50 viewport width, that's 50% of the width of the screen by 30 viewport width for the height, as we change the width of the browser, the image starts to scale as we would expect. So already we have a much more scalable, more fluid design. Now percent is a percent of its parent, and this is a little different than viewport width. Viewport width is a percent of the entire screen, but as we see here, if we set, say this fill to 30% the width of its parent, or whatever percentage we decide to set here, once we're ready to change the parent container, and we change the width of that, the item inside is gonna grow in scale because it's a percentage of its parent, not of the entire screen. So that's the main difference between those two. Um, EM is like this magical unit. It's this um, sort of like problem solver for a lot of things based on the font size. And so Webflow really comes in handy when using EM. So if we were to set the font size to 100 pixels of this button, and then we were to set its width and height to 200 pixels, that's looking fine until we decide to change the font size again. Say we do 200 pixels, then we would have to change the width and height again. Instead, we can set it to EM, and EM is going to scale with the font size. So now as we change the font size of the button, the size of the button scales as well. And this is really handy for making quick adjustments on mobile without having to change a bunch of other properties. So the way this works is, for instance, it's set to 2 EM for the width. That's two times the font size of the parent container. So since the font size is 50, this would be 100 uh, pixels for the width. If the font size was 100 pixels, the width would be 200 pixels. So that's kind of the way that EMs work. Now, once you start to really master EMs and use them correctly, um, it can really speed up the process of development. So for instance, if we were to set everything in this nav bar, the arrows, the margins, the logo to EM for the size, now, if we grab the nav bar itself and change the font size, everything inside is going to grow in scale. Or if we grab the footer and change the size there, everything inside is going to grow in scale as well. So we wouldn't, didn't have to add a ton of new classes here or make any sort of messy styles. Um, just everything inside is scaling based off the font size of the nearest parent. So that comes in handy when you're maybe building this out on mobile and you decide all these nav links to need to be a lot larger in the nav menu, or maybe you just want to quickly reduce the size of everything in the footer to make it all a little smaller. You can use EMs and grab the parent uh, container. So if we look at how all these work together, there's a couple examples that we can use to put this into practice. First of all, say this section here we're using across the entire website, it all has 100 pixels padding left and right. That's looking fine right here, um, and it's, it's working okay, but as we go down to tablet or even mobile, we'll see that that 100 pixels is not changing, and things start to look really squished. Um, so yeah, we could reduce it here, but we're creating another style that we maybe didn't need to create. And it's the little things like this that slow down your development process in the long run. So what would be a better unit we could have used for the left and right padding to make it reduce as the width of the browser reduces? And if you guessed viewport width, you would be correct. So that would be a much better unit where we wouldn't have to create a new style right here in this case. Um, so let's say in this next example, we decided to switch it to viewport width. And that's working fine. Um, and let's say we have two containers that are each about uh, half of the parent container. So there are 40 viewport width uh, for each of these. So we got 10 and 10 on the sides and 40 and 40 in the middle. 
Um, now here, let's say on tablet, we decide to reduce this to six viewport width for the paddings. Now these two containers that are 40 viewport width aren't actually uh, spanning the whole width of their parent. What would have been a better unit we could have used here instead of viewport width to make it span the whole width of its parent? And if you guessed percent, you would be correct. So if we would have set each of these columns to 50%, then once we reduce the padding on mobile, we wouldn't have to create a new style or a new class here. Everything would have just scaled because it's 50% of any available space within its parent. Um, so percentage would have been a lot better here. Now in this next case, we have everything set to EM. So as we scale the size of the container, everything inside it is shrinking based on the font size. Um, and that's working fine, but say on tablet, we want to increase the size of this icon. And let's say we increase it to 4 EM, maybe, for the width and height. Now we would have to increase the icon itself as well, because that is set to EM. So what would have been a better unit we could have used for the icon so that it scales, it grows in size with the width of its parent? And if you guess percent, you were correct again. <laughs> so those are basically how we can think smarter about web design, setting up your style so that I found on average for me, mobile design, making things responsive takes up about 10% of my total dev time because I'm thinking of styles in this way, um, trying to make things to where they'll scale really easily when I need to adjust them on mobile. So if we look at most websites today, the way that it works is everything's set to pixels for the most part. And there's a max container, like in this case, um, 1080 pixels max width for the sides. And that works fine in most cases. Um, in some instances on like larger screens, there's a ton of empty space on each side. And then smaller links like this start to get lost. Um, but nothing actually changed. The H1 is still 94 pixels in both instances. It just looks a lot smaller here because the screen size is so much larger. So that works for um, most site designs, but if you have a sort of a modular design site, um, it starts to get a little complex and a little difficult to work with. So something that's a little easier to work with in a lot of cases is to use base everything on viewport width. So everything scales up with the width of the browser. And in this case, what we'll see is the experience on a MacBook Air looks the exact same as the experience on an iMac. And this works really well for certain types of designs more than others. But the way that we do this is the body font size is set to viewport width. All the H1s through H2s are set to EM, so they're scaling based on the body font size. And then all our images and paddings are also um, either set to viewport width or EM, so everything is relative to viewport width. And to make this a little bit easier, I created a style sheet that you can actually clone, it's free to clone, and it basically removes all the unnecessary styles in Webflow. So all the top and bottom margins that are pixels on the headings, um, anything unnecessary, and it switches all our line heights to just a unitless line height, so it'll scale. And this is kind of what it looks like. So if we grab our headings, for instance, you'll see the size is set to EM, the line height is set to 1.4, so as we change the font size of the heading, the line height will scale. If we grab the body and change the font size of that, you notice every font size is scaling up and down with it. So in mobile, if we want to reduce all our font sizes, we just have to change one size and they'll all scale down. But let's look at this on 5,000 pixel screens. Everything scaled up seamlessly except this button because it was set to pixels for the paddings and the margins. So if we set that all to EM instead, what we'll notice is that on smaller screens, uh, it's gonna look the exact same as it does on a larger screen. So nothing changes. We'll also have to think of things like drop shadows, border radiuses, actual borders themselves. They would all need to be set to EM. So that way it scales on larger screens just the same as it does on smaller screens. So let me know if you have any questions about that. I'll drop the link to the style guide in the description, and I hope you enjoyed.